A man walks into a store and steals a $100 bill from the register without the owner's knowledge. He then buys $70 worth of goods using the $100 bill and the owner gives $30 in change. How much money did the owner lose at the end? So the options are $30, $70, $100, $130, $170, $170 or $200. This is a math riddle and it's a tricky one. You will probably need to sit for a while with a pen and paper to work it out. Let's check the solution now. The answer to this riddle is the owner lost $100. Let me explain this in detail. The riddle seems really confusing, but if you break the question down step by step, it's really not that difficult. The riddle starts with the man steals $100 from the register. He then gives the $100 back to the owner when he pays for the goods. Now the $100 which is stolen is with the owner. At this point, owner did not lose any money. But the owner has then lost $70 worth of goods. At this point of time, owner encountered a loss of $70. Then the owner also loses $30 when he gives the man his change. So total loss encountered by the owner is $70 worth of goods plus $30 change which is equal to $100. Thus, the answer to this riddle is $100. Even though the sentences used in the riddle confuse you in achieving the correct answer, but if you analyze the riddle step by step, then the whole analysis becomes simple. You see a shirt for $97. You can't afford it, so you borrow $50 from your mom and $50 from your dad, which equals $100. You buy the shirt and get $3 change so you give your dad $1 and your mom $1 back and you keep the other dollar. So now you owe your mom $49 and dad $49 which is equal to $98 plus your $1 which equals $99. Where is the missing $1? Let's check the solution now. To understand the answer to this riddle, we need to take a closer look at the question because there isn't a missing dollar. We are led to believe that there is a missing dollar by the question, but the question itself is offering up a mathematically impossible puzzle. As per the clues given in the riddle, you took $50 from your mom and $50 from your dad. So the sum of the money is equivalent to $100. After that, in the next clue given, you buy the shirt worth of $97 and you get back $3 change. Hence, $97 plus $3 equals $100. There is no confusion till here. Next, you give $1 to your mom, $1 to your dad and you keep $1 with yourself. So now this makes $97 for shirt plus $1 with your mom plus $1 with your dad plus $1 with you which equals $100. You now owe mom $49, dad $49. So $49 plus $49 equals $98 and your $1 makes $99. The $1 you have cannot be added to the debt as it is part of the debt already. Your debt thus remains at $98 as you have already given $2 to your parents. Therefore, after giving $1 to mom and $1 to dad, the missing $1 is with yourself. Be very careful while analyzing this particular statement. Thus, the problem lies with the phrase plus the $1 in the last but one sentence. Why are you adding the $1 to the money that you still owe your mother and father? Of the money you owe them, that is the $1 that you don't have to worry about. It's the other $97 that you have to worry about. You should be subtracting the $1 from the $98 instead of adding $1 to the $98. You should be very careful while solving this kind of problem. We are led to believe that there is a missing dollar by the question, but the question itself is offering up a mathematically impossible puzzle.
I had five dollars. My mom gives me ten dollars, while my dad gave me thirty dollars. My aunt and uncle give hundred dollars. I had another five dollars. How much money did I really have? This is a mind-boggling riddle that is trending on social media, including Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, as it tests the logical skill of a person. Answer to this puzzle is ten. Let me explain how. This is the traditionally accepted answer, but not everyone agrees with it. Essentially, the riddle is based on tenses and not mathematics. It's asking how much money did I really have. This is the past tense. It's not asking how much money do I have currently. Paying close attention to how the question is worded, notice the question is how much money did I really have. Rather than how much money do I really have? The way the question is worded encourages you to question how much money you had before being given some by the relatives. By throwing in a bunch of different figures, it aims to throw audience off into thinking they must add them all together. With this in mind, I had five dollars, and I had another five dollars. Are the facts worth taking note of to provide an answer? So the answer to this riddle is ten dollars. So basically, the riddle is asking how much money, not about the amounts that people give or give. So you only pay attention to the two parts of the riddle that say I had five dollars and I had another five dollars. Disregard everything else, and you have the answer. Only twice in the riddle where we told what you had, which was five dollars and then another five dollars. So the answer to this riddle is ten dollars. A bat and a ball cost one point one dollar in total. The bat cost one dollar more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? Let me repeat the puzzle. A bat and ball cost one point one dollar in total. The bat cost one dollar more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? Many people thinks that the ball must cost ten cents. Although this response automatically comes to mind, but it is incorrect. Ten cents answer is incorrect because if the ball cost ten cents and the bat cost one dollar more than the ball, then the bat would cost one point one dollar for a grand total of one point two dollars. Then what is the correct answer to this particular puzzle? The correct answer to this problem is that the ball cost five cents and the bat cost. At a dollar more, that is one point zero five dollar, for a grand total of one point one dollar. Not convinced? Let me solve this by using algebraic equation. Read the question again. They haven't asked the cost of bat, but they said cost of bat is one dollar more than ball. Let x be the value of ball, and bat cost one dollar more than ball. So now bat costs x plus one dollar. As per the question, total cost of bat and ball is one point one dollars. Now equation becomes cost of bat plus cost of ball equals one point one dollars. The cost of bat is x plus one dollar, and the cost of ball is x dollars. So the equation becomes x plus one plus x equals one point one. After solving this equation, the equation becomes two x plus one equals one point one. After solving for x, the value of x comes to 0.05 thus the cost of ball is 5 cents and the cost of bat is 1.05 dollar so why do so many people uh, answer incorrectly the answer is that people often substitute difficult problems with simpler ones in order to quickly solve them in this case people seem to unconsciously substitute the more than statement in the problem that is the bat costs one dollar more than the ball with an absolute statement the bat costs one dollar so one must be very careful while solving these kind of problems best way to think to solve these kind of problems is by using algebraic equations a 
A woman buys a dog for $500. She sells the dog for $1000. She then buys the dog back for $1500 and she sells the dog again for $2000. In the end, how much money did she make or lose? Like most of these mathematical questions, there are a couple of answers based on the information given. Let's break it down. Let's solve this problem step by step. In the first step, a woman buys a dog for $500. Let us make some assumptions here. Unfortunately, we don't know if she had $500 or had to borrow it. I think it's safe to assume she had the $500. So assuming she had the $500 cash to start with. So now she had $0 and a dog after she buys a dog for $500. In the next step, she sells the dog for $1000. So now she has $1000 and no dog. And in the next step, she then buys the dog back for $1500. Okay, so now she had to borrow $500 from somewhere. So she has $500 debt and a dog. In the next step, she sells the dog again for $2,000. So she gets $2,000 cash, pays back the $500 loan and has $1,500 left over. So the answer is $1,500 unless you assume she had to borrow the first $500 in which case she has only $1,000. But in any case, she would be making $1,000 profit in the end. There can be other interpretation also based on the assumptions we are making at the beginning. Do share your approach in the comment section. My goal is to have $12. If I save $1 a month, then it will take me 12 months to save $12. If I save $2 a month, then it will take me 6 months to save $12. What if I saved $1.5 each month? How many months would it take me to save $12? Let me explain the solution now. Though riddle looks simple, but it is trickier. As soon as someone reads or listens uh, to the question for the first time, most of the people thinks that the solution is 9 months. Because most of them tries to simplify the problem, keeping number of months in mind, but more emphasis should be given to dollars. As per the question, for $12 to save, if I save $1 every month, then it will take 12 months. And if I save $2 every month, then it will take 6 months. If I answer, it will take 9 months. If I save $1.5 per month, then the answer is obviously wrong. Because 1.5 times 9 equals $13.5 and not $12. The best way to solve this problem is through Mathway. Just divide total dollars to be saved over dollars saved per month. Then we will get number of months. So if I save $1 per month, 12 over 1 equals 12 months. If I save $2 per month, 12 over 2 equals 6 months. And finally, if I save $1.5 per month, then 12 over 1.5 equals to 120 over 15, which is equal to 8 months. Thus, correct answer to this problem is 8 months.